What's the deal, baby? Y'all didn't know it is the big boss, how boss that okay poke through the dough. Hit the top this box and what's good with y'all boys, man. We talking about Errol today, man. You know what I mean? Uh I ain't really talked about Earl Spence in a minute. But I'm excited for his next fight. You know. Um I already know it ain't gonna be against nobody. You know, he, he don't fight fights. Well, we know, oh, they're all going to win now. He don't fight those type of fights. He fight fights against killers. And that's what it is. And it's going to be against a killer. You know what I mean? You know, it ain't going to be against that boy because that boy is, he don't want that smoke. So it's going to be against probably Keith Thurman. You know, I wouldn't mind Errol fighting Boots. You know what I'm saying? F You know, he Boots say he ready. He feel like he the king. Put that boy in there. You know what I mean? F it. That's a tough fight. You know what I mean? But I do think Earl Spence will come out victorious in those fights. You know, uh, a lot of people don't really respect Earl Spence's style, bro. Like, we just got to be real. Like, when 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 you hear people talking about Earl Spence, they just talk about, oh, he's a volume puncher. That's, you know, and he just break guys down and pressure cook you. It's like, no, this nigga got skill. You know what I mean? The nigga head be offline when he throw his jab. He don't really get hit that much. For, Cause look, and anybody who been in that ring know, the more you open up, or it, I don't say been in that ring. Anybody that been in a fight before, the more offensive you are, the more open you are, right? Okay? The more offensive you are, the more open you are, okay? So you're susceptible of getting hit. Errol don't be getting hit like that. Like he get hit, you know, by like one or two hard shots. But it's not like he getting hit consistently by six, seven, eight punch combination. You know? Like, nah, it'll be rolling, catching, parrying, and all that. Countering. You know? Fighting on the inside while coming forward, being aggressive, throwing punches. You see what I'm saying? But they all underestimate Earl. That's the that's the thing. Our Earl Spence is basic. Let's go back to the people who talked about Earl Spence. Leonard Bundu. Right? When he fought Earl Spence, it was, he had to approach him on uh, Earl Basic, you know. Um, he, ain't, he ain't seen the, you know, I've been in there, you know, with, with this fight, this fighter. Earl Spence made that boy go to sleep. That boy was laying, he was leaning back. He was getting low. The T-Pain version. So they get low, low, low. That boy laying on the back, man. That boy, <laughs> that boy was reclining on them ropes. You know what I mean? He tore his ACL, mess with Earl. That boy knees, <laughs> that boy knees was tucked under his thighs, man. That boy was out of there. You know what I'm saying? Chris Algieri. Earl Spence is basic. You know, I believe that, you know, he hasn't seen any fighter like me. I've been in there with Mir Khan and Manny Pacquiao. And, you know, this guy's just up and coming. He hasn't seen nothing yet. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna put a real boxing clinic on him. What happened to Chris Algieri? You don't mind me asking. See, everybody want to sit there and discredit L when L beat him, right? When L Spence was fighting him, they was going with Chris Algieri, okay? Let's just keep it a thousand. When L Spence was finna fight Chris Algieri, they was, oh, man, Chris Algieri finna, you know, he finna buy some circles around L Spence. Then L beat him. Oh, L, L beat a 140-pounder. Man, we not trying to hear them excuses, bro. Y'all was going with Buddy. Then L beat him. You know? It's an issue. Kel Brook. Those people like, man, I don't know if L Spence beat Kel Brook. Kel Brook big. He's strong. You know? I don't know, man. That's that's a tough task. That's a tall task. You know? And early on in the fight, it was a tall task. We're going to keep it a thousand. Early on in the fight, the first couple rounds, Kel Brook was doing his thing. But L. Spence kept chipping, chipping away, body shots, uppercuts, chipping away, chipping away. He was making sure that if Kel Brook got three punches out, he got four. You know what I mean? And eventually that boy broke. He broke Kel Brook's wheel. Kel Brook thought that, oh, you know, I'm just going to keep throwing. And, you know, this little young bull going to quit. No. Nah. L. said, you going to quit. <laughs> And that's what y'all don't understand about that man. That you gonna have to knock Earl out. You ain't gonna. 
He's not going to quit. He ain't, he ain't that type of dude, bro. You're going to have to sleep with him. That's the only way you're going to get him out the way. You're going to have to lay him out. So I guess Kel Brook, Kel Brook was, early on, was doing phenomenal. The hell just kept, kept chipping away, chipping away. And around, around six or seven, that's when I saw Kel Brook. Like, dang, man. That's when I saw him quit in that ring. I saw him mentally just, you know what I mean? The L just kept coming, chipping away at that iceberg. Then broke that boy over the bone, and it was a wrap after that. I think even if the fight would have carried on, he Kelbrook would eventually got stopped. Even if L didn't break his over the bone, Kelbrook would have got stopped. Because L was getting stronger. And he started to throw more. He got a second wind in the second half of that fight. You see what I'm saying? It was just like, man, this boy here, man, he on a whole nother level. You feel me? Sean Porter fight. Nah, Errol was the favorite in the Sean Porter fight. But he told Sean Porter, okay? I'm going to beat you. Exactly how you fight. So you want to go toe to toe? We gonna do that. That's what we gonna do. Right? Now, granted, early on in the fight, I say rounds one and two, Earl Spence was boxing, and he was. I gotta say, he was he was putting a boxing clinic on Sean Porter. But then I think he remembered what he said, and he went from I think from rounds three to round twelve. He just. Went toe to toe with Sean Porter. And it was a great fight. You know what I mean? I think if he could do the fight over, he probably would have boxed Sean Porter. You know what I mean? I, hell, I ain't gonna lie to you. Errol Spence boxing Sean Porter, I think Errol would have stopped Sean Porter. I ain't gonna lie to you. If Errol would have boxed Sean, he would have stopped him. That's my perspective. You know what I mean? Now, Sean Porter was in his prime. He was tough. But I think if Errol Spence would have boxed Sean Porter, he would have stopped him. But Errol said, nah. I, he told dude, I'm going to beat you at your own game. Right? The same thing he did with Mikey. And this is the thing. Sean Porter was a 147 pounder. Big 147 pounder. Right? Rough, rugged style. And they was picking Errol Spence to beat him. But against Mikey, who was so-called the smaller fighter, who y'all claiming, oh, he couldn't even knock out 135-pound Mikey. Which Mikey had fought 140 pounds twice. Okay? And he fought over 140 pounds. Because when he fought Broner, it was at a catch weight. At like 144 or something like that. So I'm not trying to hear that stuff. But anyway, I digress. Okay? I guess Mikey. Everybody was picking Mikey. I see something. Garcia to beat Errol Spence. They was picking Mikey. All the legends was... It's Mikey. Couldn't even give you an explanation. Hey, why are you picking Mikey Garcia? Because it's Mikey. That's that's the answer they came up with. It's because it's Mikey. You know, Mikey. <laughs> Mikey, I see something. I don't know. Hey, Mikey. That's what they was doing. They say, big. I'm going to beat him at his own game. I'm going to show you that I got the better IQ. I can show you I can box. So what did Errol do that whole fight? Outbox Mikey Garcia. Go look back and watch the fight. Robert Garcia was going to stop the fight. He was either in between rounds 9 and uh, 11. And Mikey Garcia begged his brother, don't stop this fight. Those rounds, Mikey wasn't even throwing no punches. He just was shelling up. Errol punished that boy. Punished him. Like, destroyed that man. Like, and you you could watch interviews of Mikey Garcia. He said that Errol Spence fight took a lot out of me. That's why he ain't been the same. That's why he was end up retiring. He ain't been the same type of fighter. That Errol Spence fight put miles on that boy. You feel me? You got to understand, man. <laughs> Earl Spence is a different type of fighter. I'm not saying he can't be beat. There may be a fighter that may be able to beat him. But right now, it don't look like it.
That boy, especially if he motivated, he, he a dangerous dude if he motivated. And if he fight Keith Thurman, he gonna be super motivated because Keith Thurman ain't give him no shot. Keith Thurman ain't give Espes no chance. You know what I'm saying? He didn't give him opportunity. Even when L, okay, they sat there and said, when L Spence was coming up in the game, all of them said, hey, L, get you a belt. Well, what's what you're talking about? L got a belt, okay? Especially for Keith Thurman. He's like, hey, I got a belt. Let's fight. Nah, not not, not today. Not not this year, baby. It's not happening. Keith Thurman was running and dancing and eluding and evading and all that from L Spence. But now... He ain't he ain't the hot topic no more. He he willing to get in there, right? I'm telling you right now, if El Spence gets in there, Keith Thurman, he's stopping him. He gonna stop Keith Thurman. I I predict that. He's stopping that boy. Now it ain't gonna be easy, right? It ain't gonna be no easy fight. But I'm telling you, Keith. Looking at Earl Spence, like, mm, it's going to be easy. I done been in there with Danny. I done been in there with Sean. You know, I done fought these fights. You know, I'm the best. I can box. You know what I mean? Earl ain't got nothing for me. And I'm one time. You know, Earl ain't got nothing for me. I'm telling you, that's how they all think. When Before they get in there with Earl Spence, they all doubt this man. They all doubt him. They just look at his style and be like, oh, he basic, man. I can, I can box circles around him. That's what they think. They literally think that in their mind. I can box circles around him. He ain't, he ain't doing nothing, man. He ain't doing nothing special. He, he, a, he a basic fighter. So y'all keep thinking that boy basic. When are y'all gonna learn that this dude, his nickname, The Truth, that's what he is. And this ain't no fanboy stuff. This is factual information, right? Okay, I get it if he was fighting below level competition, he was fighting C level fighters, and I'd be like, okay, yeah, the truth? Mm, I don't know. This nigga, God, God forgive me, and you too forgive me. This nigga fighting killers and he beating them. Not barely beating them, he beating them. Punishing these niggas. You know what I'm saying? He breaking their will in there. He making you <laughs> he making you fight off emotion. He making you get off your game plan, which is a no-no in boxing. That's what he doing. Or you just standing there getting punished because you can't move. Because your legs is gone. You don't have the legs. So all you can do is just stand there. Like what he did to Ugas. Ugas doubted him too. Y'all forget that. Ugas sat there and was like, oh, he ain't, you know, I'm, I'm the bigger welterweight. He avoided me. Because y'all remember, Ugas, back in the day, was L. Spence mandatory for his IBF belt. Right? And that's when Ugas was looking like a monster. See, I gotta remind y'all, this one Ugas had hair. He had eyebrows. <laughs> that's how that's how long ago it was. Ugas had eyebrows. Cause you know Ugas got that alopecia. Ugas had eyebrows. You feel what I'm saying? He had facial hair. He was he was El Spencer's mandatory. And he was talking in that Spanish. I like you know them Cubans speak that fast Spanish. I don't, I don't, I don't think, you don't think I fight me. And then finally, when he get the fight after he beat Pacquiao and L, say I, I want to fight Ugas. He was like, he ain't seen nothing like me. You know, I'm the bigger welterweight and this, that, and the third. What L do to Ugas? Broke that boy eye, broke his ribs. That nigga still. This is the thing. The nigga still ain't been in the ring yet, bro. He ain't back. Now, he been cleared medically. I think he got cleared like at the end of the year last year. But he still ain't back. Well, after you fight L, you take long layoffs. These niggas don't come back. 
compared to other fighters. You take long layout. It all punishes you, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. All you got to do is go look at, if you don't believe me, if you think, oh, man, you lying, go look at every fighter that Aaron done fought, see when they come back and fight. I think the only one that it came back and fought immediately was Ocampo. And that's because Aaron Spence stopped him in one round, right? He ain't had time to punish him. He stopped him in one round, right? But everybody else, they take long layoffs. They be gone. Months, six months, eight months, a year. You ain't coming back after you fight Aaron Spence. Put some respect on that boy's name, bro. That's all I'm saying. At the end of the day, we got to keep it a thousand. He the big fundamental. He ain't flashy, but he got he's a master of fundamentals. And that's what makes him elite. Y'all let me know what y'all think, Buzz Gone.